Today I'll be discussing the TerraStation 5000 and 7000 iSCSI availability. The first thing you'll want to do is understand that your NAS comes set as LVM off and all capacity of your TerraStation is configured as NAS. So when you go into your folder setup and create a new share and do your root level permissions and you handle SMB, AFP, FTP and all of these services, all of these run off of your NAS as NAS. When you go to the drives area you'll see LVM and it's the logical volume management area. What it's going to do is allow you to take your RAID array and it's going to require formatting it. So any data that you have on there is going to be deleted and erased. So you'll want to make a copy of it and back it up before doing any going any further. So the first thing you want to do is enable LVM. We're going to enable LVM on the array, on the array and it's going to format your disks. As soon as it's done, all capacity of your drives now are associated with nothing. Uh, so we want to go into NAS volume. Should you want to use all capacity as iSCSI, then we'll get to that in just a moment. However, if you still want some of the capacity as NAS volume, then you'll go here. You'll go back to your LVM area. You're going to go to NAS volume, click edit. And I already have my NAS volume configured with two terabytes worth as NAS. So you can just do create volume and create it as NAS. And then I'm going to hit close. So what that's going to do is give me that two terabytes to be used for all the other services. Being able to do DLNA serving, being able to do iTunes serving. All of that comes from NAS volume. When you use your system as iSCSI, it's going to essentially be mounted on an operating system such as Windows um, or Citrix, VMware, something that mounts iSCSI volumes. It will then you treat the iSCSI target, which will be our NAS, as if it was a physical drive being added into that system. So all services that are going to be run are going to be run on the server on which is the source that's adding the iSCSI target. So in this case I'm going to be using Windows Server 20, uh, 2008 R2 and I'm going to use iSCSI Initiator to be able to add it. So we're going to go back to the drives area and we're going to open iSCSI. You can either flip this switch on to turn iSCSI on, or if it's already on, then we'll click here to configure iSCSI. Once that is, once this is here, we're going to be need to create a volume, and you don't need to use all of your iSCSI or your hard drive RAID array capacity that you've made from LVM in one iSCSI target. So in fact, I'm going to create just a 100 gigabyte. You'll see here how much is remaining. I actually have a 2.7 terabytes or so of space. Two of it again is being used for NAS, so I have 762 gigs available. I'm going to use 100 gigabytes for this volume. I'm just going to call it iSCSI 1. Now you can also go into the advanced settings. One of the important things to note in here is the max connections area. If you're doing any kind of high availability uh, server clustering, anything of that nature, the max connections are likely going to have to be modified on a tier station 5000 from 1 to 2, 3, 4, whatever you need. iSCSI can only be mounted to one system at, at a time. However, if one server were to go down in a high availability cluster, it will then have the second server request to mount the iSCSI target kind of gets handled that way. So you want to be able to have this more. On a TerraStation 7000, this is now a 12 or 16 default for max connection. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK on this. I made no changes. And I'm going to hit OK one more time. You can do a description if you want, not necessary. It's going to create my volume. It's going to create an, uh, a, an iSCSI target. It's going to be 100 gigabytes in capacity. And once that's complete, you'll want to head over to your Windows Server 2000, uh, 2008 or higher. Uh, you can do this on Windows 7, you can do this on Windows 8, and I believe you can do this on Windows Vista as well. So what you want to do is load iSCSI Initiator. I have it loaded. Uh, the easiest way that I found to load is click on Start, just type iSCSI. It'll pull that up. If you haven't run this tool before, it'll pop up and ask, do you want to enable the services and so forth? Yes, you do. So that will now pull up to where you can type in a target. Well, the target's going to be an IP address. So I'm going to type in the IP address of my NAS, which I know is over here. And 
And I'm not going to hit Quick Connect yet. We could, but I won't. I'm going to wait till this is uh, done creating its volume. And I'll show you some more of this. So I'll copy this IP. You could directly, if you wanted to, add it in as a favorite target. You could add here, if you know the mount point. Um, I'm, it's easiest in Windows to do it here. Click Quick Connect. You'll see here I have a job completed. My SCSI is done. I'm going to go ahead and Quick Connect it. This goes out. It's going to find what's the IQN, which is the unique identifier to be able to connect to your NAS. Um, you don't have to use the IQN or know the IQN. It is, but it's going to show you what the actual IQN is here. And it's going to show it's now connected. When you do Quick Connect, it's automatically going to connect to it. So I'm going to hit Done. It's logged in. And I'm actually going to show you back here on our NAS what happens. And when I click uh, the OK here, you'll notice the client IP addresses. It now notices that 192.168.7.37 has connected to that iSCSI volume. Because I only have max connection 1, nothing else is going to be able to connect to it. Notice this one is connected. That is the IP address. So if I were to set max connections to two, it'll actually comma separate and show you as many as it can IP addresses that have connected to that Terra Station's iSCSI target. So I'm going to hit OK on my iSCSI initiator. Now, if you go into your disk management area of your server manager, I see here that I have a new disk. It's 100 gigabytes. It's always going to come set as not initialized. So the first thing to do is initialize this as a disk. I'm going to right click on here, say initialize. I'm going to set this as GPT. You can see here that in order to get more than two terabytes of capacity, which many people want full capacity of iSCSI, then you want GPT GYD partition table. So I'm going to hit OK on that. And just like a drive, it's now initialized. I've unallocated capacity. I'm going to make a new simple volume out of this. I'm going to give it all the capacity, drive letter and I'll call this iSCSI and I'm doing a quick format so this won't take too long to format Windows should do that very quickly now let me show you another thing you can do you can go back and create a new iSCSI target again I didn't use all my capacity so I'll create another 100 gigabyte target I'm going to call this iSCSI 2 I'm going to use the default settings this will take just a minute or two for it to create its iSCSI volume You'll notice after this has formatted, we'll be able to open this up and it's going to have drive letter E. It's going to look as if it's just a standard drive. So I am now opening it in Windows Explorer. And I have my iSCSI volume. I can go in here and create a new directory. I'll just call this test. And then I'm going to create a new file, maybe a new text file and call this test as well. So I, you use this as if it was a standard physical hard drive that's being installed. All of the advanced sharing and security is going to be done through Windows because it is now associated with Windows. So not all of this can be done file and folder level. So I can go in here to this specific file and I can go into my uh, either edit or advanced. Maybe I want to change all my permissions and I'll add a, a user and give it full properties to this file. So I can restrict this as if it was a, a standard Windows drive. So this is going to give somebody with an ass file and folder level permissions by doing it through iSCSI and have that managed on the actual server itself. Where if I went into our NAS and went to the share, that's root directory level permissions, file and folder level all inherit the permission level of the root directory of the NAS share. So you'll see here it hasn't been auto connected. Now I'm going to go back to my iSCSI target or iSCSI initiator and I'm going to go ahead and type that IP address in again and notice it's going to show me, hey, you've already connected to this one I'm going to go ahead and connect to the iSCSI 2, my second one. Now it's connected. You'll notice it's immediately available in my disk management area. 
these targets are going to reboot automatically. If I reboot this web server or this WSS server, it is automatically going to pull those iSCSI targets up on reboot. If I reboot the NAS, this iSCSI initiator is going to continually wait for that NAS to reboot. Once the iSCSI is available, it's going to mount that target each time. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm not going to actually create this, uh, format this. I do have to initialize it again, which I'm going to do here. After this is initialized, which now is, I can right click on this and I can mirror this as if this was another drive that was installed. So now I'm adding a mirror, even though the iSCSI target is on a RAID 6 RAID array, I'm now mirroring two iSCSI volumes together. So it's something you can do for whatever reason you may have to be able to do that. Uh, these are just it's more just showing that these are going to act as if they were physical SCSI installs. So I now have that. It's going to resync. Um, I could let that go. I'll probably just blow those out. You can go ahead and just create more and more iSCSI volumes as you want. Um, and you'll notice if I close it, if I were to just refresh this, it's going to show, hey, that IP address is now connected to your iSCSI volume. So that is how you configure iSCSI. And this is the way that a lot of people are going to use it. You can also use this within VMware. Uh, that's a tutorial for another time on how to mount that in VMware. If you have any questions, just let me know.